Hi YouTube, today I thought I'd do a quick video on how I emulate PowerPC versions of macOS using the emulator Sheepshaver. There are a couple of other PowerPC emulators out there, such as the now defunct PearPC or QMU. PearPC was originally released on May 10th 2004 and was an experimental PowerPC emulator for Windows and Linux. Version 0.1 couldn't do much, but later releases throughout 2004 and 2005 brought increased functionality and allowed the emulation of a G3 on x86 hardware, albeit at a slow speed and only ran up to macOS 10 10.3 Panther. This was not a classic macOS emulator. It took 6 years to go from 0.4.0 to 0.5.0, and this was the final release. QMU or QEMU is an open source hypervisor that also emulates other platform processors through dynamic binary translation and provides a set of different hardware and device models for each machine. It supports emulating several instruction sets such as x86, ARM, MIPS, Spark and PowerPC. It's mainly command line driven and a bit awkward to use for a beginner. However, its ability to emulate these other platforms makes it very handy for a retro enthusiast like me. So why might you want to run an emulator in the first place? Well, I can think of five reasons really. The first is the cost of physical hardware. Prices are on the rise and machines are becoming more and more rare. The second reason is space, as not all of us have room for a large collection of machines. Third is the ability to run, with QMU for example, different types of machines and architectures on one physical machine. Fourth, speed. These emulators on today's hardware perform many, many times faster than they do on actual hardware and you don't have to worry about leaky caps, dead parameter batteries or scuzzy hard drives. And the final reason might be that you simply only want to run one particular piece of software and don't want to fork out for an actual machine, monitor and peripherals. Oh, and one that's just popped in my head, the inner geek that likes the idea of inception, of having a machine inside a machine inside a machine inside a machine. So I'm going to talk about Sheepshaver, which I've a fair bit of experience with. It's an open source PowerPC Apple Macintosh emulator originally designed for BOS and Linux and is capable of running macOS 7.5.2 through to 9.0.4. To get started, you'll need to download a copy of the emulator itself. I find the easiest place to get the most up to date version is to Google Sheepshaver Immaculation. This should take you straight to the page on Immaculation's website and provide download links. You'll also need a suitable ROM to download and another quick search for Redundant Robot Sheepshaver will take you to a page with a downloadable ROM on it. From here we need a disk image to store the emulated Max operating system. This can be created directly using Sheepshaver, but if you plan on using this on a Blue Scuzzy, for example, I'd advise downloading a pre-made disk image from the Blue Scuzzy GitHub website. You don't want to go through all the effort of creating a virtual machine and customise it only to find out the Mac you're plugging the Blue Scuzzy into doesn't recognise it for some reason. Next, we'll need a macOS installer CD image. Either make your own if you happen to have the media, or download one from websites such as macintoshgarden.org or winworldpc.com. The next step is entirely optional. Create a folder, and this will be used to get files in and out of your emulated macOS environment. This can be called whatever you want it to be, but remember this name as you'll need it in the Sheepshaver settings. Upon launching, Sheepshaver will look for a ROM in the same path as the application. Call the ROM file that you downloaded from Redundant Robot macOS ROM without an extension. When Sheepshaver opens, it'll find this file and show a flashing question mark folder. From there, choose the Sheepshaver menu and then Preferences. By clicking the Add button, we can add some volumes to the virtual Mac. Choose the macOS Install a CD image and then click the Add button again and choose the hard disk image you downloaded. Or click the Create button to create a new disk image. As the ROM file has the correct name and is in the same path as the application, you don't have to specify it, but I find it doesn't hurt to do this anyway. Change the memory size to something like 128 megabytes or higher, and optionally, if you created a transfer folder, enter the path in the Unix root or press the Browse button to find it on the file system. Choose CD-ROM from the Boot From drop-down list. Where the volumes we added a moment ago are listed, put a tick in the tick box under CD-ROM. Click on the Audio Video tab. Change the resolution to your preferred screen size and change the refresh rate to 30Hz. You can increase this higher but bear in mind your machine will spend more time redrawing the screen and it may feel sluggish. No other settings need to be changed. Click Save and Quit. The settings window will disappear but the changes you've made won't work until the machine is reset. 
Sadly, the close button won't work, so you have to force quit the application and then start it up again. Provided you've done everything correctly, opening Sheepshaver a second time should lead it to auto-boot from the CD-ROM and after a few seconds you should be at the desktop in the Finder. Launch the macOS installer from the CD image, choose whatever options you want to install and then sit back and let it do its thing. Installation should be a lot quicker than if you were to do this on actual hardware. Sheepshaver emulates a Power Macintosh 9500 series if you choose the New World PPC ROM from Redundant Robot, but doesn't emulate all hardware functions, specifically a memory management unit, which limits it to emulating macOS 9.0.4 but no higher. This may cause compatibility issues with some software. Also, it doesn't emulate a SCSI or IDE bus, so some utilities may not work. Once macOS is installed, you are free to customise it and install any software you want, but it doesn't have any 3D hardware acceleration, and therefore any applications that require this may not run. But for the price of free, one can't complain. You can't use Sheepshaver to run any versions of macOS 10 either. VMware Fusion has had the ability to virtualise macOS 10 since Apple switched from PowerPC to Intel, from about version 3 of the software or higher, but require an Intel Mac. You can download and run VMware Fusion for non-commercial purposes for free. Well I hope you found this video useful, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.